Ileoinguinal block dissection is usually performed for cancers ranging from cancer of the penis, cancer of the genitourinary system of the uh, males and females, and also the malignancies involving the lower limb. And depending upon what cancer is the reason for doing the block dissection, the incisions may vary, the type of lymph nodes and the number of lymph nodes that are removed may vary. One can simply do the inguinal part of the dissection or can do more of the iliac part and less of the inguinal part of the dissection like one does in Vardimes, etc. But generally speaking, ileoinguinal block dissection is pretty standardized. The upper limit of the dissection being the bifurcation of the common iliacs. The lateral limit of the iliac part being genitofemoral nerve. Medially, it's the bladder. And in the depth, it's obturator nerve in the iliac part. In the inguinal part, on the lateral side, we have the sartorius muscle. Some people, for the superficial block dissection, will just go to the anterior edge. But for a deep dissection or a complete dissection, we need to get the complete fascia of the sartorius. Medially, it is a ductal longus muscle. In the floor, we have pectineus and ileus was in the lateral part. And of course, beyond a point where the sartorius and ductal longus cross each other, the anterior canal starts. So the vessels get into the anterior canal after that. In the triangle, the structures that we need to look at and the endpoints that we need to establish include the nerve, which is femoral nerve, femoral artery, femoral vein, empty space, which is usually the uh, femoral ring through which femoral hernias happen, and of course the lymph node of Clocke, which is the medial most lymph node. Now, the model or the simulation that we are going to share with you would demonstrate some of these points and the vid video that follows of a live case would probably substantiate the understanding of the process and also maybe add a few more happening aspects of the ilo inguinal block dissection. Now a word about the position in which the patient is kept. The patient is usually kept supine with a very thin sandbag or a towel under the ipsilateral hip in order to push it up and the knee is flexed a little bit in the form of a leap frog position which kind of takes the uh, thigh a little laterally and that opens up the femoral triangle better. One can do it in a supine position also, I have been keeping it straight also but generally this is the classical position. Now the sandbag or the thin towel actually also helps in the iliac part of the dissection where one has to cut through the external oblique aponeurosis and deepen to get into the retroperitoneal space by pushing the peritoneum up and medially and thereby exposing the iliac vessels so that dissection can proceed as mentioned. Now while uh, looking at the boundaries, it's important to understand that the inguinal part of the dissection is not stopping at the inguinal ligament. So lateral limit I mentioned was the sartorius, medial limit is the rectal longus, floor I mentioned is pectineus and also iris washed laterally. Part of the rectal longus also becomes a floor medially. But importantly, it doesn't stop at inguinal ligament, it goes at least 2 centimeters superior to the inguinal ligament onto the external oblique aponeurosis. These lymph nodes are the superficial chain and also include the cabana dissection and during the entire surgery, it is important to clear the lymph nodes from every corner. Certain conditions like cancer, penis, etc. may not be very radiosensitive. So then surgery is the only modality of treatment. Therefore, we need to get a clear margin. Now, I will mention about the incisions just a while later. Importantly, when raising the flaps with whatever incision, flap failure being a major killer in ileoinguinal block dissections, it's important not to use a lot of diathermy and not to make very long lateral flaps. Therefore, there are many, many modifications of incisions. Classically, if one has got a fungating lymph node, which is a common scenario in this part of the world, or if post-irradiated irradiated patient is there, then a lot of people like to prefer to have two parallel incisions 
one in the uh, supraingual region and the other one in the infraingual region. The gap between the two being roughly about 5 to 6 centimeters and these lines diverge away from each other. So it's not that they converge at each other. So that allows the this uh, paddle, the skin paddle in between. And between the two lines, the distance should be more than 4 to 5 centimeter. That is to keep the paddle viable, the skin paddle in between. A lot of people like to take a lazy air sensation, including yours truly. This incision starts just about medial to the anterior spelic spine. And I'd like to prefer about 3 to 4 centimeters medial to it, going parallel to the inguinal ligament and feeling for the femoral artery and going medial to it so that we don't have a trisection sitting on the major vessels. In case of a failure of the flap, the vessel shouldn't be exposed to the exterior, which actually is the reason for the femoral blowout, which is a cause of instant death in a lot of patients with cancer, penis, etc. Now, well, this is generally about the incision. Now, people also do have uh, I, I, do li I would do like to mention about the concept of two parallelograms drawn. Uh, personally, I, pers I think this is the incision which suits the scenario in most cases and will share with you the same. Now, the incision is being marked. Now, that's the, just to demonstrate a surface anatomy, that's inguinal ligament. Uh, oh, sorry, that's the, the dark one is the inguinal ligament, that's the midpoint of it. Medially, it's the sartorius, the superior part is the medial part here. And that's the 4 centimeter that I'm trying to show. I'll go parallel almost to the inguinal ligament. One can see that, gone beyond, and then I take a lazy S down to the apex. So this I have found very good and very with limited number of flap failures. And one should not use diathermy. This is the concept of two parallel lines about 10 centimeters uh, distance between the two between the two this is just to demonstrate uh, one is not too keen on doing it this way I mean it's it's important to realize that it's not the we don't need thin flaps like we do in many cancer surgeries that's saying one ligament being marked pubic tubercle here and pubic symphysis is medially and that's anterior felix spine and one can see that that's the quadrangle again being drawn just to highlight the incision is in uh, this is the just to indicate the superior limit that's the bifurcation of the common iliac and one dis starts dissecting from above downwards in this fashion that's the bladder which is the medial limit of uh, this is just to indicate the surface marking that's bladder which is the medial limit of the dissection the depth is up to the operator nerve we'll see all these structures in the videos that follow that's the Common iliac vein, which bifurcates into internal and external. External iliac, iliac vein will continue down as femoral vein. External iliac artery as femoral artery. And we generally, as you can see, the curved part of the incision is going beyond these vessels. So they are never exposed in that manner. The, of course, ureter would be crossing the common iliac bifurcation. That's genitofemoral femoral nerve, which forms our lateral boundary, or lateral limit. Now that's our ileus was being indicated with the fibers going down that's roughly to indicate as to what are we expecting to do that's a femoral nerve which is the lateral most part of which is the lateral um, uh, landmark that we look at that is sartorius it's going straight down sorry erector longus and this is sartorius which is the lateral part and the two cross here beyond that it is anterior canal and uh, the vessels and the nerves would disappear in this well, this is all covered with the fascia, which needs to be taken and as an envelope that should be taken away as one. That's the great saphenous vein, which would be lying superficial to the deep fascia. And one would encounter this early. These are the three tributaries, the external circumflex iliac, pudendal and the uh, superficial epigastric. These three one would encounter during the incision. Generally, saphenous preserving is possible. That's the femoral ring or the empty space as we talk about and that should be the lymph node of Clocke. So that actually is a pictorial depiction of what you are going to see once we open up. All these lymph nodes, lymphatic, fibrolymphatic tissue needs to be removed in the iliac iliac block dissection.
Now that is just to indicate that I mark my incision after feeling for the pulse and going medial to it and drawing it down like, like a lazy ass. The iliac part I usually do subsequently. Many a time we send the inguinal lymph nodes for frozen. If they are negative one may not proceed to iliac block dissection. That is why they should be done in two stages. To start from above, one is committed to then doing both the dissection. So that's the that's exactly what I'm going to demonstrate in this video. That's inguinal ligament. Just to reinforce sartorius and adductor longus. That's the incision. Now the incision is made, but not deepen in the iliac part in the beginning. We deepen it only in the inguinal part. Once the incision is made, the flaps are laid, raised laterally first, and then medially. Laterally, we go right up to the lat limit of sartorius. Both the scarpa and camper both will be lifted. One can see that the blood vessels are clearly seen, and it's are, uh, one should not diathermize these vessels. Cold knife is a very good idea, a very good way to raise this flap, and then the one can easily see the vascular pedicle and the supply the perforators that come and supply the flaps should be preserved. Now the medial part of the dissection is right up to the adductor longus and while doing so one can actually encounter the great saphenous vein along with some lymphatics and also lymph nodes. They all need to be taken. Now most of the time great saphenous vein can be sacrificed if there are nodes but in many situations one can preserve. That's called saphenous preserving. Now this is just the superficial part and the what you are seeing right now is the fascia that is covering and that is the com, uh, great saphenous vein. We usually it is a good idea to ligate and transfix and lift up the entire fibro fatty tissue along with the great saphenous vein. It will take us to the junction with the femoral vein which is where we need to reach eventually. It can be ligated at both ends and the threads can be left long to lift it up. Now that's the cribriform fascia through which the great saphenous vein would enter into the com into the femoral vein. One can leave it at that and then we start lateral to medial which is the classical way to do it and one can see the sartorius would be showing up soon and the muscle is visible, the floor is also visible, some bit is covered with the fascia which is lifted up. Now sartorius is bared completely and then we would be lifting it up from below up and from the sides as one envelope into which all the fibrolymphatic tissue is taken. Now that is what that is just to demonstrate that I like to go from below up it becomes easier and one may actually encounter the femoral sheath early in this case but just to demonstrate the classical way I am back to what we would normally do the femoral vein is come into view. Now the dissection proceeds lateral to medial and this fascia covering the sartorius is removed. As you lift this fascia the lymphatics come out like an envelope. The femoral sheath then opens up. All the lymph nodes lying in the vertical chain are lifted up along with the femoral sheath and now the dissection proceeds upwards and medially and exposes the femoral artery and once the sheath is completely stripped off. Uh, these are the, this is a great saphenous vein which is joining the femoral vein along and it has got its tributaries which are individually ligated before we transfix the great saphenous vein using either a vicryl or one can use silk and once you transfix it, it can be as flush as possible because sometimes the lymph nodes could be lying there and transfixation is done in the classical way by taking the thread around. And importantly, if the well, once this disconnection happens, these tributaries, even if they are sometimes arising from very close to where the femoral vein is, they can be individually ligated and tied. These are the same superficial circumflex iliac, which is visible in the picture right now, and uh, then external pudendal, and of course the superficial epigastric. That's the circumflex iliac, and that has been ligated and transfixed and removed. So that makes it, this is the external potential which again should be ligated and we should individually get them 
see that's being ligated now and the great stiffness vein can be then taken along with the specimen which is now the dissection proceeds medially and what is green here is the empty space that we talk about this is just to expose and see if there are any lymph nodes or lymphatic tissue there although this space is mostly empty and this is where the femoral ring is and that's through this this is the lymph node of Clocke which is the medial most part of our dissection clearly shown here as a shining likely involved congested lymph node. The sheath is lifted up alongside now that's the femoral nerve femoral artery femoral vein empty space and the lymph node of Clocke lateral to medial that's a classical way position in which they lie. Now one can leave the specimen here or one can detach it or, and then the ileic part this is the inguinal part of the dissection it can be sent for frozen section to see if it is positive if it is positive then the ileic dissection can proceed. That's the femoral nerve femoral artery femoral vein and that's the femoral sheath and at the end we'll close this opening by suturing the lacunar ligament to the inguinal ligament to prevent femoral hernias in future. That's a great softness vein. That's the medial part of it. Now that specimen is usually sent for frozen so that we can decide about ileic part. The rest is very straightforward and one can proceed to the ileic part. That's pectineus and alis vas which form the floor that's a femoral nerve that's the lateral most structure and the femoral artery, femoral vein that's a ductal longus and actually one can see them crossing as we saw in the beginning and that is the apex that's inguinal ligament and we should have cleared one to two centimeters super, superior to it which we have done already now the incision is made in the external oblique aponeurosis and muscles are split and or cut the moment they are lifted up one can see the peritoneum and the fat which needs to be pushed up to expose the retroperitoneum. Now this can be done with a mounted sponge or with a open blade dissection with the scissors and the entire thing needs to be pushed up especially the peritoneum to expose the retroperitoneal structure and one can see the genital femoral lung showing laterally and soon we will be able to see all these structures coming into view importantly the major vessels the inguinal ligament is uh, the sorry the peritoneum is that green parchment like structure that you saw just now it has been pushed up and the assistant will keep it in the retractor now we go right up to the bifurcation of the common ileic artery and the dissection then proceeds downwards it is easier to see the obturator nerve below but then I like to see it at the bifurcation as soon as I dissect the lymphatics down it usually presents itself in the depth if your clearance is good it's very easy to see not very difficult it's a thick nerve which actually indicates the depth of the dissection because that indicates that the obturator force has been cleared and as you can see the nerve in between that's the obturator nerve that's the internal ileic artery and the bifurcation would soon be visible we have actually seen it but you will see it medially as one sees the fibrolymphatic tissue being pulled down one can actually see circumflex iliac vessel vein and also the internal iliac vein and that's the floor which is the floor of the dissection that's the common iliac that's the external iliac artery the lymphatics around it are completely taken away you will see in the live video we take it on a vein hook and clear all around it we will once again be dissecting from the I mean you'll, you may need to take down all the nodes and immediately we must expose the ureter and the bladder we will soon be doing that this is looking like the bladder soon the ureter would come into view the bluish red here is indicating the bladder it just to give it a different color so that one can appreciate it the internal alic artery is disappearing into the pelvis and the small branches close to the inguinal ligament can be taken care of. Now all the this is the lymphatic part which is cleared off two centimeters superior to the inguinal ligament this must be all removed. 
and in the process one may have to take some fibers of the inguinal ligament. Now that is the ureter clearly seen crossing the bifurcation of the common iliac. The bifurcation is clearly visible and all the lymphovascular tissue is being dissected downwards. Immediately one can now see the bladder coming into view. That is the bladder. The bluish vessels on it showing the plexus of vesicle plexus of veins making it distinct and separate. Peritoneum, peritoneum has been pushed up as you can see and you can see the ureter very clearly here and uh, it is recognized by peristalsis and the position in which it lies. That is the internal iliac artery, that is the internal iliac vein, external iliac vein, that is the internal iliac vein and all lymphatics lying in between these structures, these vessels must be cleared. The entire specimen is dragged down, right down to the inguinal ligament which we saw in the uh, initial part. This is the ureter and that is the bifurcation of common iliac and we have seen it clearly here and that is where the obturator nerve is coming from. The bifurcation of the common iliac artery and vein both are clearly visible. Now we trace the entire fibro lymphatic tissue down to the inguinal ligament and laterally we go up to the genitive femoral nerve. That is peritoneum which has been pushed up. It can be allowed to fall back once we have cleared all the lymphatics. And uh, the inguinal ligament is once again shown very clearly here and the external iliac artery would become the femoral artery below and external iliac, the internal iliac vein would become the femoral vein below and we need to clear all the lymphatics around meticulously and one can see the, the femoral part of the dissection now more clearly that is the femoral ring through which hernias may happen therefore this ring needs to be sutured closed by suturing that is the cord that is the cord by suturing the lacrimal ligament to the inguinal ligament so the opening is closed to pre prevent hernias. We do not like to put a mesh there so it is better to put that is where the artery crosses the vein clearly seen an atypical site of murder as they call it that is a femoral nerve and that is the crossing of the the femoral triangle that you see that is the longus that is the sartorius and under that it is the Hunterian canal. That is the clearly shown the common iliac dividing into internal and external iliac and both the artery and the vein that is the genitive femoral nerve, ileus muscle is below that very clearly shown and that is the femoral part of the dissection. Now we are going to show you what is supposed to be used for covering the common but the, the femoral vessels for radiation so that they are not exposed and there is no uh, blowout. We take a sartorius flap, the entire sartorius or a part of it which you will you will see in the main video also is detached from the main uh, the major muscle and the entire muscle does not need to be removed. We do not remove the entire muscle and it can be just rotated medially and sutured to the inguinal ligament to provide cover to the femoral vessels. We in fact close it on the sides also, it will be visible in the live case that will follow that I use 3 O vehicle to fix it and at the end we will have an empty knot to completely provide a sartorius flap to protect the femoral vessels from blowout after we have done all the clearance. One can see that it has been put into place and that is the usually the protective layer over the femoral vessels also prevents the drain from eroding into it. But more importantly it is for the radiation that is to be provided to the patient in adjuvant setting and that is the everybody not completed and one can see that every structure is very clearly visible. The wound is closed with the drain in situ. It is important to make sure that we put pressure garments to begin with to prevent lymphedemas and flap failure. The femoral nerve is clearly seen, the femoral artery can be seen under the flap this is just to demonstrate and finally as it lies in normal position one can see that it stands completely covered and we did not have to use the entire uh, sartorius. So, it appears like a Y pattern closure which we do routinely now rather than shifting the whole sartorius because that takes away the strength from the, uh, from the thighs and the muscles and delays the recovery. Now that is the inguinal ligament to which it has been sutured, all lymphatics have been cleared 
and the wound can now be washed with a saline. That's once again to revisit the anatomy. That's the ureter. That's external iliac artery. That's internal iliac artery. External iliac vein. That's the obturator nerve. This is the genital femoral nerve. And that's the bladder, which is the medial limit of my dissection. And the peritoneum has all been pushed up. So it's very clear that uh, these steps are followed in the real life scenario. That's the sartorius flap. Immediately that's the femoral sheath, which will again close by suturing the lacunar ligament to the uh, inguinal ligament to prevent the, it's just demonstrated that this is where the femoral hernias happen from. So it can be prevented by suturing it to the floor, which prevents a femoral hernia. Now this is the external pudendal vessel, which in this case we didn't need to ligate because it was ligated proximally. And that's the cord. And now the wound can be closed. These are the iliac lymph nodes and the fibrolymphatic tissue, which will go for histology with a mark of the medial lateral superior inferior groups. The suturing is done. And we are going to apply a, we'll put a suction drain which will last for a while because we need to have a bone dry cavity before we actually remove the drain. We cannot afford to have collection of seromas in these cases. And that's how the procedure is done. We'll cover it up with the dressing. Now, lazy S incision has been marked. There's a very thin sandbag that is put under the uh, ipsilateral hip to make the eyelid part of the dissection easier. And uh, now the flaps are being raised. Medially, one would go up to the erector longus. And as one is raising the flap, one would encounter the great cephanous vein, which may be preserved in what is called as a cephanous preserving a block dissection or it may be sacrificed as it would be done here uh, which is to actually take all the lymphatics along with the great cephanous vein. Now the medial flap is being raised and one can see the adductor longus coming into view and very clearly one can see the perforators getting into the flap. These need to be preserved and that's the technique we follow. The great cephanous vein is now being ligated in the, at its lower end. It will be transected and lifted up and we we like to keep the the end long in order to make it possible to actually lift it up and apply some kind of attraction. The great cephanous vein is lifted up and dissected clearly. Now that's the medial limit being shown and one is trying to expose the sheath that is covering the great, the sorry, the adductor longus. Now the fibrolymphatic tissue all along this dissection is lifted up upwards towards the femoral sheath which is where the dissection would usually uh, in that direction is the, dis the dissection would proceed. Similarly the lateral flap is raised and sartorius is exposed which is the lateral limit. No one can see the adductor longus clearly now and that's the sartorius which is the lateral uh, limit and the apex of the triangle is where we lift up the great cephanous vein from. So the rest of the dissection is proceeding upwards, as I mentioned, and from lateral to medial. Now, the dissection of the femoral sheath would also be an important part. And the sheath has to be taken along with the fibrolymphatic components. And one can see the femoral nerve coming into view, which is the lateralmost structure. And uh, it is clearly preserved and lifted up. Now, that's the femoral nerve including its supply to the muscles, which should be preserved, and it should be neatly dissected off all the lymphatic tissue. Now we are expecting to see femoral artery, which is the next medial structure from the, as you move medially from the femoral nerve. All the lymphovascular structure is lifted up, and we keep going medially. Finally, we reach the femoral canal, and that's where we also find the lymph node of Glauque, which is the, in some cases considered, was once considered the sentinel node for carcinoma penis. 
we as a routine we dissect remove and send it for frozen section the same was done in this case and this along with a couple of more notes have been sent to the for frozen now the femoral vein comes into view one can clearly seen as it crosses from under the i mean under the femoral artery now these notes would be sent for frozen and if positive one would proceed to complete the ileic part of the dissection as one can appreciate there are already visible and palpable nodes in the inguinal region and one is expecting more nodes as the dissection is completed and hook uh, is now traced right down to its entry into the femoral vein and there is this is the place where we transect it flush after ligating all its tributaries the junction can be very clear femoral nerve femoral artery femoral vein from lateral to medial can be very clearly seen the empty space and of course the lymph node which we have already taken out now the cephalofemoral junction and the cephalus vein is great cephalus vein is transected so these are the boundaries the rectus longus and sartorius could be very nicely seen femoral artery the pulsations can be appreciated the femoral vein and this is one tributary uh, which is the lateral circumflex that needed to be ligated now the dissection proceeds upwards towards the inguinal ligament until all the lymphatic especially the superficial group is dissected which is coming into view now it is safer to ligate these veins as they continue to ooze otherwise now this is uh, the inguinal ligament that is coming into view and actually this is actually the aponeurosis of the external oblique on which we try to clear off all the superficial nodes and that's very very clearly visible it's uh, we ligate it to make sure that there's no lymphoria later on one can easily do it with diathermy but to prevent lymphoria and you can see all the lymphatics this is the inguinal group this is a complete dissection with all the structures identified clearly and now you can see that the entire superficial group and it's a big chain with lots of nodes there especially in carcinoma penis now i'm not getting into the controversy of the cabana and the other limited dissections it's just a classical ileal block dissection that we are demonstrating now the transverse of the abdominis is being transected and we are actually getting into the ileac part of it now it's neatly cut uh, and there's hardly any blood loss loss if that genital femoral nerve comes into view along with swas and uh, one has to proceed to find out the medial limit which is the ureter and ureter can be identified easily once you lift up the peritoneum so peritoneum is been reflected upwards and uh, one can actually see the uh, ureter very clearly now that's ureter and that's the genital femoral nerve and that's the lateral limit medial limit is the bladder which is seen on the medial side now that's what is the bladder now one can see the ureter clearly with and one recognize the ureter by its peristalsis the ileic vessels are on the lateral side and the dissection as i mentioned in the beginning proceeds from the bifurcation of the common ileac downwards to take all the lymphovascular tissue which between the ileac vessels right up to the uh, bladder downwards now that's the ileac uh, the, the entire ileac group of nodes being dissected downwards one can appreciate that this right angle mixture is very handy although one can use any energy source it's entirely optional and depends on the practice that's the external ileic artery one can appreciate the pulsations and lots of nodes even lateral to it which need to be dissected that's how the lateral bit is jet of femoral nerve now as one is dissecting it down one can see the limb, lot of lymphovascular tissue which is coming down along with the uh right angle mixture that's a genital femoral nerve again, again in interview that's ureter very clearly seen and its peristalsis can be appreciated and the external ileac artery is being retracted and one can see the ileac vein inside and this is one structure which should be taken a great care of in the depth because it's bleeding can really be a trouble that's the internal ileac artery and internal ileac vein one can see the internal ileac artery external ileac artery is there that's internal ileac artery and that was external ileac artery okay now this the lymphovascular tissue is dragged down dissected from above downwards using traction and counter traction and as one is pulling it down peeling down these structures any vascular structure should be appreciated coagulated uh, or ligated it can be clipped also 
and the depth is obturator nerve as one would see on reflection of the now that's the entire iliac lymph node groups that have been removed and one can clearly see the ureter again the external iliac artery there and one had seen the internal iliac artery earlier and in the depth the iliac vein and also importantly to look for the obturator nerve which becomes the deep limit of dissection that's a lateral limit genital femoral nerve once again demonstrated it's uh, this this is clearly the dissection that proceeds from above downwards the pulsations of the artery are appreciated as and one lifts lifts it up so that's the obturator nerve which is in the depth obturator nerve for the depth of dissection and all lymphovascular tissue is basically tra traced downwards towards the inguinal ligament which is where we had left the inguinal dissection and one can tunnel the lymph nodes either way to cover up the complete dissection Now, the rest is pretty straightforward. We join the two groups uh, under the inguinal ligament, and as I mentioned, we do not cut the inguinal ligament. We lift it up and we can carry out the dissection. That's a specimen of iliac nodes and inguinal nodes. The boundary is revisited. That's sartorius, which is the lat limit. The adductor longus, which is the medial limit. The floor has. The structures from lateral to medial is femoral nerve, femoral artery, femoral vein, empty space, and the cloquet node, which you can, this is a transected gray sepness, which we have ligated here. We always transfix it. Femoral artery is very clearly visible. That's femoral nerve, femoral artery, femoral vein. And the pectinous muscle forms the floor of the femoral triangle which is an important landmark for the depth in the femoral triangle and the obturator in the, the iliac part. Now, the vessels are exposed and if one is subjected subjecting this patient for radiation or even otherwise if there is flap failure, the vessels can actually be a major problem if they, uh, there is erosion or if they give way, there can be a blowout which can cause instant death and that's in fact one way of the way the carcinoma penis patients die. So there is this sartorius flap that is used traditionally. What we do differently is that we don't totally disconnect the sartorius. We just take segmental supply and laterally take it away to suture it to the floor or the pectineus which we showed earlier. and or to the inguinal ligament. That's the sartorius flap being classically finalized using an aberdeen knot at the end. Now the medial part also we suture down to the floor. So that completely seals off the femoral vessels and the risk of blowout or inadvertent uh, exposure to the atmosphere causing the blowout is avoided and prevented. This is one flap which has which done very well with us. So even in the situation of the flaps failing, this flap holds on and allows the fumarose to be taken care of. Now that's the Aberdeen knot again for the medial limit being completely covered. So at the end of the procedure, you have the vessels completely covered and there is no way there can be any blowout. The other advantage it provides, which we observe, is that it provides a complete closure, which prevent, reduces the seroma rates where the cavity is completely obliterated. Now that's quickly the partial pinectomy. The incision has been marked two centimeters proximal to the induration rather than the lesion. And we usually take a longer ventral flap in order to be able to cover it up. And the technique that I follow is uh, very simple. We just uh, make incision as planned. Uh, this is the cover of, we use a glove to cover the, the malignant part. Now the skin is, the incision is deepened and after that the trick is to look for corpus spongiosum separately and once corpus spongiosum which has urethrine dissected it is lifted up tied and transected the rest of the corpora cavernosa can be all put in one vascular clamp and can be completely transected as one entity which allows for this is the corpus spongiosum which is being ligated this has the urethra 
and we will then completely transect it's almost a bloodless procedure if done this way now one can now see the corpus spongiosum being cut now stay sutures in the urethra are applied and foley's catheter is now removed which was earlier put to make sure that the dissection proceeds in an organized way now these stays will help us hold on to the urethra the specimen along is taken away and now we are just simply closing the corpora cavernosa both are sutured together as one layer and over the years i have seen this as a very good functional outcome and uh, that should be the completion of the procedure